Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 5. We open on the mountain. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, it's actually a uh, paperweight? Wait, no, hang on. It's a, uh, oh, it's a, it's another hideous ring. I, I, I mean, I mean, uh, incredible, beautiful ring. Looks like we've got our seven. Only nine to go. Weren't the stones that they used for the first three like super duper rare and special because they came from Valinor or whatever? Like the only ones of their kind in Middle Earth? So what are the stones that they're using for the dwarf rings? Just some random rocks? The Sunhole Recovery Project has not made much progress, but the king is optimistic. Uh, dad, that's a load-bearing wall? You calling me senile? Of course not, I just... I want this wall gone! For real? No! Dad goes for it. Hey y'all, let's, let's get everyone out of here. So after about three swings of that pickaxe, Durin's like, hey Pops, isn't it maybe time for a breather? We don't need breathing, we need lighting. And what do you know? He's found a sun hole. So they just didn't know that outside this wall was the outside? Well, Dad's never gonna let them live this one down. Next time I say jump, you say how high. And he points out another good spot. Couple hits and boom, another sun hole. He was really bad at knowing which walls face the outside. The king's giving a speech. Those dummies who live out there, <laughs> relying on the sun for light. Idiots, not like us who live in caves. Out there, everyone's a slave to the sun's schedule, but not us down here. Who also only have light when the sun is out to shine through your sun holes? Everyone cheers for the new sun holes. Except for Disa and her bestie, who are giving it the side eye. Wasn't she the one that was like, Whatever it takes, we are doing whatever deal we need to get sun holes again. And now, meanwhile, back in Eregion, Kelly Belly is talking about how great it is that elves and dwarves could work together side by side. I mean, not literally side by side because they cannot even stand next to each other, but yeah, you know, teamwork, yay. And they worked so hard together to achieve sun holes. Sauron is also hanging out. Girly gives his arm a awkward little pat, like, yeah, we did great. Great job on the group project. Don't touch me. Oh no, not sun holes. So the project that they're celebrating the completion of, it's actually stone doors that they built in Aragion. See, I always thought the doors of Durin were like carved into the mountain, you know, into the very rock wall, not built elsewhere and then installed. Like what's in the entryway now? Just a big gaping hole because the elves were like, yeah, we'll help you, but like, we are not gonna go over there. If you want us to build this door for you, you bring the rock to us. And so they're like, yep, sure, no problem. And just like cut out the rock and then brought it over to a region. Kelly Belly decides to lighten the mood by calling one of his new dwarf friends a thief. It's definitely not gonna create tension or anything. Sauron has had enough of this staff meeting. Super relatable, honestly. He's looking sad on his little balcony. Was it too much? I thought we agreed you'd keep it short. Did we? Typical. You never listen. We love a grump and sunshine romance. Oh, I know why you're pissed. It's cause I didn't mention you. Totally fair. That was my bad. Nah, I'm just being a moody grump cause I'm emo about global mordoring. You want rings for men. What? I, I didn't say. Yeah, yeah. Cut the shit. I wasn't born yesterday. I see how you manipulate people. Well, excuse me for thinking we were on the same page. I'm not doing this tonight. Let's get back to the party. Well, I want to do it now. Listen, men are welfare queens who need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. We can't be giving them rings. They'll just use them to buy drugs. There's plenty of Numenorean charities that can help them already. Have you ever been to Numenor? No. It's actually low-key amazing. But they could use some help. Nope. No way, man. I'm not giving rings to men. He does think Sauron is like a holy messenger, right? So he's like... bickering with the holy messenger? Okay, listen. I hear you. Men do kind of suck. But there are some diamonds in the rough. Chosen one hero types, you know? And let's go choose some chosen ones. Specifically nine. Nine? The perfection of the three. Thrice perfected for our third forging. Okay, and the dwarves got seven because... Nah, brah, sorry. I'm not doing this. Any of this. No, no, it's all good. No worries. I get it. I'll just do it myself. Wait, what? Meanwhile, in Numenor... You ever seen the gates to the Undying Lands? Nope. The elves for sure put them where we can see them to taunt us. So petty. Dad, you're king now? Can you be like, happy for a second? It's not enough. 
How about we stop complaining and we start planning on how to make Numenor great again? Hey, uh, did I ever tell you that your mom predicted a bad future for you? Wait, what? Can you be more specific? Hmm, maybe. Tell you what, I'm gonna give you a little project. And if you knock it out of the park, I'll tell you what mom said. But if you mess up, well. Dun, dun, dun. Meanwhile, also in Numenor, indistinct mob noises. Muriel is sad and Elendil is trying to cheer her up by assuring her that the silent majority is with her. He wants to fight to reclaim her throne. And she is still in the castle in her old chamber. She does not appear to be a prisoner in any way. And according to him, the armed forces are very much still on her side. The way I understand it, that's usually the deciding factor in a coup. And she's like, nah, it's useless. You open my heart to the way of the faithful. I serve you. What did you see in the Alfrock? You mean when he briefly touched it and then immediately got blasted against the wall? I saw myself riding. Then you didn't see... It? It? Sometimes, to win a battle, you have to not fight. I would recommend using a different metaphor to make this point, because battles are famously things that can only be won by fighting. Like, you could choose to not fight in a battle, but you can't win a battle without fighting. Like, you can choose to not make an omelette, but you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Not without breaking eggs. Well, so what if I can't, Gordon? You know, I mean, I'm a busy man. My talents lie in other directions. No, no, I mean, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. What is this? Cookery corner? You know what I mean? I'm not following. Me either, dude. For years, that elf rock showed me our doom, but now everything is fine. Me getting dethroned was the best thing for everyone. You want my command? Here it is. Just go with it. Meanwhile, the Navy is peacefully turning over their uniforms. Who knew a violent overthrow could be so... non-violent? We've been fired. Says who? Says me! Fair is honest king, so being loyal to the queen is treason. You for real right now? Yeah, dad. Brother is dead, which makes me right. Yeah, but Elendil's son is dead, so does that make him right? This heart-to-heart -heart ends with Elendil telling his daughter that she's in danger of drowning? I don't know. Elendil turns in his sword, but not his uniform. Captain leaving deck. Everyone stands at attention to watch Elendil walk away. So emotional. Uh, he's nobody's captain now. Elendil slowly, dramatically pauses, then slowly, dramatically turns. He's right. Then he slowly and dramatically exchanges glances. I'm not. Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Bless, Thank you, Captain. Captain. Bless you, Captain. Bless you. And Discount Draco is like, silence! I'm telling my dad! Hansi Parkinson offers to get Isildur's bestie's job back, but he's like, nah, I'm good. Then we cut to the elf rock. Dun, dun, dun! Meanwhile, in Linden, Papa Elf is finally reading that letter that Kelly Belly sent like two episodes ago. I guess that messenger made it okay from Aragion to Linden, but... The fellowship is still making its way from Lindon to Eregion. Kelly Belly's letter is all about how he's for sure most definitely closing up shop. He's totally looking forward to retirement. Papa Elf seems suspicious. You see, Gal was way off. Kelly Belly's fine, nothing to worry about. Time to invade Mordor. Papa Elf gets some bad visions, bad things. But Elf Lady seems to know that that's what's happening even though he doesn't tell her, unlike Elrond who needs Gal to tell him that's what's happening. But just like Elrond, Elf Lady is like, dude, we are not basing our plans based on the vibes of your ring, right? Okay. Papa Elf uh, says nothing. But speaking of Elrond, on the road between Linden and Aragion, Elrond realizes that running with a cloak is slowing him down, so he dramatically rips off his cloak. I mean, the rest of the Fellowship keep their cloaks on, so I guess we'll see who gets there faster. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, back in Casa Doom, you were the one who wanted to do the ring deal. I know. It was your idea. I know. It was like your whole deal. I know. But singing open the holes made me special, and now they're just opening holes without singing, and it's just not fair. That was my thing. It feels like they're cheating. And I've decided it's sus. Aw, oh, honey. Dad knows what he's doing. I don't know. That kind of insane total power is dangerous. The power to find sun holes without singing? But Durin knows just what to do to cheer her up. He takes wifey shopping. It's perfect! Durin thinks it's overpriced. It's a tuning crystal. A what? 
It doesn't matter. The salesperson tells them to blame the price on the king. I'm not sure he's aware he's talking to the king's son and heir. Because there's now a 100% sales tax on everything and they're calling it a ring tribute. But this is a birthday gift for my little girl. A tuning crystal? What is a little kid gonna do with that? Can't you give us a deal? They get the thing, but whoopsie doopsie Butterfingers, Deesa drops it. And it goes rolling, rolling, rolling. And then we watch Deesa, she bumps into every single person who's in the market. And it rolls and it rolls and it rolls into the shadow. Uh-oh. She goes a little ways down the passage just adjacent to the market and is like, what is this place? Are you telling me no one has ever gone down that way? Ever? It, like wasn't even hidden. It wasn't hard to get to at all. She finds this huge massive cavern with a pool in it and her first instinct is to belt out a tune as you do. There you are. Oh, she was singing so she could find the tuning crystal, I guess. What I find most fascinating about this place is the way that the lantern that is behind her is lighting the front of her. And there's dramatic rumbling. And Deza drops the tuning crystal and it breaks. Cut to the dwarf NATO summit. Middle Earth is changing, its limbs stretching, its bones creaking. But darkness is on the rise, so here's the plan we've put together to defeat evil. Seven rings of power. What power, you ask? Power over earth. Power over rock. Power over destiny. Okay, but like, what does that mean? One of the dwarves tries to grab the ring and Durin's like, ah, 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 ah. These are not for you. They're for your bosses. Wait, these aren't the people you're giving the rings to? They're just envoys? Tell your bosses they can each have one of these fancy new super duper non-specifically great doodads for just seven low payments of 7777 plus shipping and handling. Sweeping dramatic shots of the mines. Cause a doom shall never want again. Cause he's using these new rings for extortion. There's gold beneath us. We just have to dig deeper. Wait, but then why the big deal about the extortion? If you're sitting on a literal pot of gold. I mean, I guess you can do both. Diversify your income streams or whatever, but I thought we were doing like a story about how, you know, instead of working to like dig for your wealth, the rings are corrupting you and taking the like the evil lazy route of extortion rather than hard work. But I, I mean, I guess we're doing more of an improv style yes and. Hang on, who set these restrictions? Uh, you did forever ago. What was I thinking? Get rid of those. But where is my ring? What did you do with it? It's right there. You took it off. You said your hand was feeling heavy. Right. Okay, well anyway, as I was saying, get to digging. In comes Durin. Stop. There's something under the mine. Deesa heard it. A nameless evil, ancient and powerful. Wow, she gathered all that intel from just one rumble? I was not giving Deesa enough credit. Get to digging. You can't. The dude doesn't know what to do. Dig. Sir, yes, sir, right away, sir. Stone singers can hear the mountain, which is cool and all. But with this ring, I can see it. And boy, I'm telling you, it's a gold mine down there. Literally. So tell your wife to hush up. Meanwhile, in Region, Kelly Billy is having a rough day. Shouts of alarm. Something's going wrong with the ring project. Sauron says they were trying to resize the ring. But then tools start flying around like there's a poltergeist. The anvil, which is hanging from the ceiling for some reason, crashes to the ground. Yakko, is our use of falling anvils going to be a bit excessive? Yep. The fire goes boom. Kelly Billy grabs the floating mallet like it's Mjolnir and he's the only worthy one. He starts groping around midair until he finds the ring and takes it off the invisible hand and ta-da, she's back. Where were you? I was here, but like, a wibbly wobbly version? There was something. I thought it was our forge, but what was it? It was made of fire. It came towards me, breathing. Cut to Sauron looking suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. His eyes will find me there. Those eyes that burn. No more talk of darkness. Okay, so uh, what did you do differently this time? Well, you guys said you were worried about men being bad, so we used more mithril. You fool! If only we had you to guide us. 
saved by the guards. Durin is here. Can't deal with that right now. He said it's about the rings. Oh, no worries. I can go. No, no. I got this. Changed how? He's real moody these days. Plus, get this, he wants half the wealth of all the other mines in exchange for the rings. When, like, what even do the rings do? Weird. Listen, is there any chance that new ring he's wearing? No, you totally, 100%, there's no freaking way. We did everything the same with y'all's rings as we did with ours. Minus the fancy rocks that you used because you didn't have any more of those, but you know, no need to mention that. Well, then maybe the problem is with the ring maker. Excuse me? New guy, who is he? Cut to Sauron, looking sus as usual. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Then we cut to Sauron in Rowl mode, telling Christine she's such a brave girl. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for any of you to see the unseen until after I'd patched up Kelly Belly. What? Yeah, unfortunately, making the other rings kind of tuckered him out. It's Kelly Belly's fault that the new batch of rings went badly, even though that's the only batch of rings that he did not at all participate in making. So what I saw, promise you won't tell anyone about it, even Kelly Belly. She already told a room full of people about this. Kelly Belly was there. Sauron turns on the charm by telling her she looks a little bit like Gal. Does what every girl wants to hear, that she looks like another woman. I don't know, she's into it though. Meanwhile in Numenor, they're holding an evening memorial for the folks they lost on the Middle Earth field trip. Oh, and they're using little shells to hold the candle. That's cute. Enter Draco. This shrine is now closed. But this is the oldest shrine in Numenor. Sorry, gotta demolish it to make way for a new aqueduct. So are y'all starting construction right now? Elendil decides this is not the hill to die on. Very wise. How does it feel to have a daughter that's ashamed of you? Elendil decides that this is the hill to die on. Less wise. But luckily, a Sealdor's friend put the stop to that. The old man won't leave without this little statue. The old man looks suspiciously like a young man with a false beard and a wig and some makeup, but whatever. Give him the relic. Draco looks like he's about to argue. Give it to him, boy. Oh yeah, that'll win him over. That won't make him react spitefully at all. And he breaks it. Who could have seen that coming? And Elendil punches him. So much for avoiding bad decisions. Draco's fixing a punch back while Elendil's restrained, but Bestie comes in again to put a stop to it. Tells him to piss off. This shrine is for the faithful. I don't see you praying. The Lord is testing me. And he throws Draco. General ruckus ensues. Draco manages to get Bestie's head underwater. Emotional music plays. Oh no, he's gonna die. Oh, just kidding, he's fine. Uh-oh, Draco has a sword. And Bestie disarms him and breaks his arm and makes ready for the kill. No, don't do it. Bestie surrenders and Draco stabs him in the back. Tell them it was a Lendiel who started it. Take him away. No. Meanwhile, in Aragion, uh-oh, trouble in paradise. Kelly Belly and his life partner are having another disagreement. There's something wrong with the dwarf rings. Or the dwarves are using them wrong, maybe, perhaps? No. I don't know why Kelly Billy's so certain. It's not like he has witnessed anything himself. He's really just got Durin's word for it, but okay. Are you sure you're not being manipulated? Considering Kelly Billy already accused you of manipulating people, I don't know if this is the best strategy. Why you always gotta be so suspicious of people? Oh, my bad. Kelly Billy has changed his tune approximately 180 degrees, so carry on. You should be more suspicious, my dear. No, I will not be. But that being said, did you alter the rings? No. Well, that settles that then. We did. What? See, making rings, it's kind of a vibes thing. And lies make for bad vibes. Lies? What lies? Whatever, whatever, I do what I want. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lie and tell the king all good with the whole no more rings thing. <gasps> you would lie? Oh, you lied. That was not a lie. Yeah, it was. Listen, you gotta go to him now. Tell him what you did. Make this right. But, but, but he, he'd make me close up shop for good. Look, it's either that or we keep making rings with bad vibes. It's up to you, champ. I wonder what Kelly Belly will decide to do. Meanwhile, in Casa Doom, listen, Pops, I've been to a region and I'm telling you, the vibes are way off. Uh, Pops wasn't listening though. I had hoped our estrangement you know, the one that happened between seasons that lasted like a few days, I want to say, would change you. You know what? It changed me. Doing business with elves, 
Genius! Thanks, man. Really saved our butts with that one. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Then we cut to Disa pacing at home. What did he say? <gasps> no. Look, I tried. Swear you will never wear one of those rings that I forced you into making possible. Meanwhile, in Eregion, Kelly Belly is giving the team the bad news about the vibes problem with the rings. But we did everything exactly the way you said to. Oh, really? You did it perfectly, huh? No hubris? No sloth? Um, if lies created bad vibes, I want to say throwing around petty insults because you want to deflect blame it's not gonna be great for the vibe situation we must make up for the bad work we did before by doing better work cut to sauron looking smug the nine aren't just going to help men we need them to also help the rings we made before bring balance to the force if you will with the nine we will redeem the seven um what they must Redeem us all. Now team, we're gonna give this 110%, each and every one of us. And anyone who gives less is fired. Got it? Okay, I'm out. Awkward silence, morale, it's not great after that little speech. Again, I don't think the vibes are gonna be any better for this batch. Sauron reads the room and knows what to do. Hey guys, the boss is a bit stressed, but he and I both know that you guys won't let us down, okay? Kelly Belly's hands are shaking. Dun, dun. Done. Meanwhile, on the road to Aregion, the orcs are approaching. Meanwhile, in Linden, Elrond finally made it back to tell Pop Elf the gal was right. Orcs are headed for Aregion. Time to send in the troops. No can do. But why? Sauron is behind all of this. That seems like a reason to send the troops. We can't let Aregion fall. Our armies cannot defeat both Adar and Sauron. So you're choosing... The lesser of the two evils? It's an interesting strategy. Meanwhile, in the orc camp, they have a prisoner. Who could it be? Gal pal! An orc threatens her, but evil Ned puts a stop to that. Very gallant. Only to have Gal draw a blade that somehow wasn't taken from her and take him hostage. No good deed, am I right? Evil Ned breathes into her face about wanting to make an alliance. Enemy of my enemy, you know, that sort of thing. Speaking of... Back in Eregion, the enemy. And that's the end of the episode. We learned this week that coups can actually be non-violent and peaceful transitions of power. We learned that the rings are not only vibes based in what they do, they're also vibes based in how you make them. We learned that the dwarves know very little about the place where they live, um, so they should probably do something about that. We learned Kelly Belly is more gullible than we thought. Um, oh, and we learned the reason why they need to make nine rings. Because, you know, three times three for the third time. Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah. So, so excited to see what we're going to find out next week.